What is going on, everybody? This is Mike from The Last Corvette. So, as the title states, we're going to talk about E85 or ethanol conversions in naturally aspirated vehicles, specifically performance vehicles. And I'll use my C6 Corvette as an example. I know the build, I pretty much did everything myself, minus the tuning. And I know horsepower, the torque numbers, and also the benefits of what ethanol brings to a naturally aspirated build. So over the years since I did this conversion, and mind you, if you have any questions about anything that I say, you can do a couple of things. You can either A, search the specific videos on my channel, or you can just leave comments below, and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. But I get the same question, right? What are the benefits? Why did you convert your LS, naturally aspirated LS, uh, to run on E85 and you know I always kind of give the same answers that I'll share with you uh, in this video right we all know that E85 or ethanol uh, performance vehicles are usually running boost you see very few naturally aspirated vehicles running E85 unless they're flex fuel vehicles from the manufacturer right I had one before they're, you see them right they're not as popular as they used to be but they're still around so anyway, uh, long story short here is this. When I did my fuel system upgrade years ago, my flex fuel or E85 was penciled in. It wasn't something that I just threw at the car just to try it. The benefits are as follows. E85 is as close to race fuel as you're gonna get by going to a gas station or getting it from a fuel pump, right? 105 to 110 octane. Uh, on summer blend, and yes, I'm speaking of different blends because I live in Michigan and any northern state, Canada, right? You'll have a winter blend and a summer blend. Same thing goes for E85. On summer blend, out of the pump, you'll usually get anywhere from 74% all the way up to 78. The highest I've ever seen coming out of the pump is 78%. Every gas station slightly differs. Uh, every gas station will get different ethanol content from fill up to fill up. And, but 74 to 78 is what you expect to see in your fuel system during the summer. Of course, another one is cost per gallon, right? If you look at E85, it all depends on the season, the economy, cost of corn, but normal kind of standard here, at least in Michigan, is E85 is cheaper or is the same price as 87 octane. So of course you're saving money by putting 85 into your vehicle versus let's say running a 93 pump. Speaking of 93 pump, my C6 is a true flex fuel vehicle. So I can run 93 pump, I'm tuned on 93. I can also run E85. I can run anything in between and the vehicle will auto adjust like a true flex fuel vehicle would if you bought one. So another benefit is the temps. Uh, my engine temps or the engine temperature, operating temperature is usually five to eight degrees cooler running on E85 compared to 93 pump. And that is either just driving the vehicle down the expressway uh, sitting in traffic uh, or racing uh, the vehicle, right? So there's a benefit there. So we kind of covered, right, the octane, we covered the price per gallon, we covered the temperature. So let's talk about the gains. You do get gains in LS uh, platforms. Uh, you get better gains uh, when you have later model LTs. I'll touch on that as well. So LS gains on E85. Uh, when it comes to horsepower, you're looking anywhere from 8 to 12. That's realistic to the tire. Now, when it comes to torque, you're probably going to be looking anywhere from 10 to 15. Uh, when it comes to torque, uh, going between 93 or 91 octane, whatever you guys use in your area, I switch them to 85. Now, why is this important? Because if you go on forums, right, you'll see all kinds of crazy numbers. Uh, you know, say oh I converted to 85 and you know I gained 50 horsepower 60 horsepower whatever it is now one thing people forget to tell you right is they might have never had that vehicle tuned so of course 85 plus a good fresh tune 
will elevate those numbers. Or they forget to tell you or me that they also put headers on or a cold air intake or something, right? Performance related. And that, of course, will also elevate the numbers. The numbers that I gave you guys are realistic numbers, something that I saw when I took the vehicle uh, to the dyno, right? Because we made pulls on 93, and then two days later, I had about 75% ethanol uh, as far as the content goes in the fuel tank. And in my fuel system, I brought it back, and that's the numbers that uh, we were able to achieve. Not crazy, but, you know, it's still gets you something right and I always tell people this if you're going to tune your vehicle tuning is expensive so if you're building your vehicle try to save up money and try to do as much as you can and minimize your tuning sessions because your tuning sessions could technically blow your budget out of the water uh, I mean every time you tune at least for me it's like 800 to 900 dollars uh, specifically if you do separate runs, right? So you're running on 93, then you're bringing it back on uh, ethanol. Now let's touch on LT. So obviously LT is the next generation of a Chevy small block, right? And that's commonly found in Camaros, Corvettes, other performance vehicles. And they respond a little bit better to 85 or ethanol than LSs. And a lot of it has to do with, you know, minor tweaks when it comes to the internals, but also their fuel injection system. That's the big key, right, being DIs. So on LTs, and I was at the dyno when, when this Camaro SS, naturally aspirated SS, was on the dyno, you'll get about 20 horse, 20 torque. Once again, this vehicle is already tuned. This was just a conversion that this person was doing. And once again, this was a true flex fuel conversion as well. So 20 horse, 20 torque, you get a little bit more, you know, five to six more horsepower and five to six more foot pounds of torque uh, if you have an LT. Not bad, right? Now, uh, when it comes to horsepower in general, right? My C6 in specific, my horsepower is right there of a stock Z06 Corvette, right? And uh, people always say, well, you know what? You should put a blower on, you should do this, you should, you should do that. Realistically, 430, 410 foot-pounds of torque is a lot of horsepower, especially if you look at the power to weight ratio of my vehicle. Now, I do have a further step, which is heads and cam, PRC heads, and a slightly more aggressive cam that I'm going to put in this vehicle. Currently, this vehicle has uh, cold air intake, ported throttle body, fast 102, unported, uh, obviously 85, larger injectors, upgraded fuel system, headers, no cats, uh, of course, axle back exhaust with an X pipe, and then stock ported heads and a 116 LSA cam. So I'm going with a slightly more aggressive cam. I'm also doing, obviously, PRC head. So I'm not gonna get a huge jump in horsepower since the vehicle's already, you know, I shouldn't say heavily modified, but it's modified, right? And, um, you know, I'm probably going to see tops 50. Um, more than likely 35 to 40 when I finish this whole build, which will put me, you know, right around 450, 460, 470, something like that horsepower, which is, you know, if you've ever driven a vehicle uh, with almost 500 horsepower to the tire, that's a lot, specifically a lighter vehicle. And, uh, you know, when people say, am I going to put a blower on? Maybe, but not on this setup. Uh, if this engine gets tired or if this engine blows up, I'll probably go with a stroker and then, you know, a forged built motor. And then from there, think about possibly getting a blower. But like I said, you know, 500 plus horsepower, uh, even you know, like if I upgrade to a stroker setup, it's plenty good for the street. I mean, you really can't utilize the horsepower unless you drag race uh, or you street race, which is stupid, don't ever street race. But if you drag race, that's, whole different story for the street plenty of horsepower especially for a lightweight car all right comment below let me know what you guys think but uh, just to kind of cap this up I'm gonna say this in my area in Metro Detroit I've only seen my C6 I saw the Camaro on the dyno uh, LT Camaro and I saw another C6 Corvette at a show a couple of years ago at Woodward Cruise actually at the cruise 
Yep. That was 85 naturally aspirated. Not very common, but at the same time, it does have benefits to convert a performance vehicle that is to run an E85.